Okay, so Twitch is updated, channel is live, music checked. We got a live stream, guys! <laughs> Alright, I'll be up and running very shortly, and uh, we'll get this plane started. We'll see you in a moment.
All right, stream is live, running, and I'm on the network. Flight plan is filed, so I'll let you see that in the chat shortly. Here we go. Here's the chat. Uh, nice and simple route. Uh, I have the full AIP, AIP for Canada available to me. I just don't have it on the channel screen right now. I'll show you the charts that I'm using, seeing how they are a little different from the norm. Uh, let's see. Here we go. And that's the wrong set. There we go. So we have the departure for Goose Bay. Uh, we're going to use the 3-dep, which is all runways, climb the runway heading for vectors, maintain 6,000 feet for 10 minutes, or until previously assigned. So we'll do the 10 minutes and we'll simulate the fact that there's a communication failure since nobody's talking to us. So 6,000 feet or the last assigned altitude, whatever's higher, proceed directly on course, uh, maintain this altitude for 10 minutes after takeoff, then climb to the flight planned altitude. So. Once we're basically 10 minutes away from the airfield, we then transition to our filed flight plan, which for me today uh, is... Twelve thousand, uh, which is 8,000 feet, as you can see. This is a, a partial, this is mostly really a, v, a VFR flight, but I've got the flight plan published as IFR just in case the weather changes. Let's get back to the pit. It's some beautiful time of day here. It's early morning for Canada, so we'll, we're not anticipating any visibility issues. Turn down the. I'm going to turn on the batteries and turn down the feed for the music just a little, so I can hear the radio. Reset camera. Okay, we've been boarding now for some time and wheels up as expected in the next 15 minutes. So we'll uh, go ahead and start the engines. And I'll show off the, fill, the skin in full once we are fully airborne. All right. Let's hide the boards and hide the stream chat. Okay, so Master Battery on. Let everything spin up. Park and brake on. And lighting as desired. Okay, start the left engine. Lights are on. Fuel selector left wing. Prop pillar, propellers full pitch forward and mixture set. Nope, mixture set to auto rich. Left engine opened a crack. Booster pumps on. And left wing meshing. Goodbye, there we go. Of the Golf 688 Goose Bay radio check. Golf Delta Golf 5x5, five five, United Nations 793. 
Thanks. Alright. Clear right engine. All rich. Right, and things open a crack. Oh, oh yes, couple flaps are open. Car repeat. All set to closed. Right, buster pump on. Good fuel and right wing engine start. Oh, not this bonkers shit again. Oh, that's why. Okay, right, fuel pressure good. Magnet was on this time. Good start. There we go. Left gen on. Good amps in the left gen. Right gen on. Good load sharing. Right gen only. Good gen. Okay. So let's have a look at the sky vector plan. It's going to be a left turn heading 288 for the Wibbush radial. Two seventy, two eighty, two eighty five, six seven and eight. We are tuned on Goose for 117.3 and the Wibush Viller is 112.3. Bonk. I'm not getting needles for it just now. I kind of expected that though, to be honest. Bay traffic, Golf to Golf 688 taxiing runway. Uh, stand by. What's, what runway should we be taking off from? Let's see. Winds are 250 for 8 knots, so I reckon this ought to be a, a runway 25, yeah. Optical 688 Goose Bay traffic will taxi for runway 26. There we go. Now I can actually see. So we'll take a left taxi. Follow all the way over to this part of the shear, the short takeoff area there. That'll be fine for us. Good brakes. Good motion for rudder and free and clear movement. There we go. And parking brake is off. So stand on the left brake, push on the right hand throttle, and we start spinning. Right brake to correct, and throttles both forward a crack. We don't, that's where we're going, we don't need a push and start.
we'll join the taxiway. Bay traffic altered to Gulf 6 at 8, joining active runway 26 for departure west to Wabush as filed. Altimeter 3031. Taxi to that runway instead. Oh, that was dumb. <laughs> Got to take off 6 at 8 on the active runway 26 this time, I mean it. Taking off active time now.
good wing, swing of the tail, and good rate. And let's haul her into the air before I really lose my shit. Was it right? Trim the aircraft for the settings. Sort out the rudder. Alright. So we have to get to 6,000 feet for the runway heading. And from there, resume on navigation. Yes, Jules, it looks look nice. I do always love sunset and sunrise takeoffs. And today we're flying the Pan-American livery, because why the hell not? You can just about see Domestis in his own DC-3 in the background. So now that we've crossed the river on radial 256-ish, I'm expected to maintain 6,000 feet for 10 minutes. I'm a little short of that at the moment, of course. And I will squawk 1200 actually. That will actually show up on the VATSIM controllers map network. So, given that I'll be flying for 10 minutes, I'm going to be pretty off course by that time. That's fine, because this is the road route we'll be then resuming at that point. Alright, let's try it. Set takeoff and climbing rates 29.5 and 23,000 on the revs.
And mixture lean. Probably should have locked the tailwheel. And that's the one thing about changing the, the minute you change the prop rate, the torque changes and <laughs> you end up having to trim the aircraft, so that was fun. Let's get the kill flaps set to trail for the moment. We'll think about closing them later. Once I'm no longer at climbing I'll at climbing rate. Crispy traffic established 6,000 feet. Resuming on navigation. That's the wrong wheel, dummy. And it was 288 for the radio. We're going to continue on to our assigned altitude, which is 8,000 feet for the flight plan. And what's the transition altitude for this place? Oh, you got to be kidding me! So Vulcan just crashed. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're not going to run with Vulcan for the rest of this flight. And I'm just going to do... I'm going to put myself on the... 076 approach to to get to go spay again like at the last time but this time we're just going to resume mode navigation because that is intensely frustrating More than enough fuel, that's fine. Just want to make sure the fuel had remembered itself.
once I get myself turned back around and reappear in the right part of the space and time, I will uh, rejoin the network. Because that, that intensely annoying. Definitely not going to be in the wrong part patch of sky for Domestus, so I will just reconnect now. I can definitely see the hit in the frame rate, that's for sure. But safety first and all that fun stuff. Right, so we're just going to say that once we're above 6,000 feet, we're going to call that transition altitude and I'll turn off the radio, the uh, lantern lights then. I am frantically looking for Domestus because according to the chat, or rather according to the mapping, he's really close to me. And I would not like a mid-air, that would be bad. Fairly far ahead, actually. We'll be alright.
don't really see much difference in the lighting, to be honest. I wonder if that's been removed. Or maybe they've just turned down the effect a little. It was a little strong at times, I suppose. We're about at the point where I want to turn off the booster pumps. It was 6 to 29 inches, 20 to 21 and a half for anything over 300, 3,500 feet. So, and for pressure set. That's set. Radial's coming around, so we'll just do the course change. Slowly rise at 500 feet per set per minute, and we'll be joining the radial shortly. Mist is somewhere over this river. Ha. It's quite a fair distance away. No wonder I couldn't see him. Right, coming up on 8,000 feet.
Right, so X-Plane has clearly just had enough of my shit today. Okay, double check that Vulcan is indeed turned off. If that doesn't work, I'm going to turn to my, to my texture settings. So Vulcan, you can just stop your shit. Let's try it without that. Let's see what it does. Turn down the. No, we're not going to mess with that because it doesn't change anything dramatically. We'll reduce the number of real world objects though. Just about had enough of this game just constantly crunching. If it continues, I may just sign out of the beta for the now until this no lot this this stuff gets its shit together. I can't be too upset, but honestly the graphics improvement is so good that I really don't want to mess with it. I, I know that this is probably just my graphics card being a bit old and a bit shit for X-Plane, but it works for so many other games and I'm not in a position to be buying graphics cards anytime soon. I certainly don't want to sink money into a graphics card until I know for a fact it is that. Yeah, Demesis, it's getting to be a bit annoying. I just want to fly around Canada in beautiful scenery. It, it shouldn't be this hard. I will. Well, now I've disabled Vulcan anyway, so we'll see what that does because obviously I know that that's experimental. I'm not upset at the fact that things are not quite working as expected. I kind of thought that was going to happen, to be honest. I wish there was a way to just throw me somewhere in the middle of the air. Yes, I have uh, turned down the textures already, um, and I'm off. I'm off of Vulcan at the moment as well. So we'll see what that does. Yeah, I think I'll be doing the same as well as you, Domestus. Uh, Domestus, I've got that GT 970 or 980 that you gave me, which I've supposedly got is about 4 gigs of VRAM, I think.
Jules, if you ended up turning around and uh, cursing me by doing that whole Haha, you don't get to leave Goose Bay because the game crashes all the time. I, I may throw a cat at you. You may be ever so slightly jinxing me. Of course, if I'm able to do this flight without Vulcan shitting the bed, then I will hang off on the Vulcan stuff till I get that. I've got, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've got my anti ceiling turn pretty far back as well, but if not, that will be the next thing to go. In fact, not even gonna. What even is an aliasin? <laughs> Thanks, Joy. It's like the Truman Show, you just can't escape. The game crashes every time you hit the, the edge of the scenery. Special effects back a notch. Oh, if I do that, I'll have to restart, won't I? That's okay. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, Jules. I, I may be forced to do that. I'm not using Vulcan right now either, so I shouldn't be getting Vulcan pipeline issues, and I should not be running out of VRAM. Uh, next pilot has complained because I'm in the middle of restarting. But that's fine, I will reconnect once the game catches up with us. Yes, ex pilot, I know you disconnected me from the network. Thanks for that. Back on. Oh, that's not looking terrible. Well, let's see what happens now. I've done everything I can to keep the state stability good. Did not have to restart. What we need in the oxygen today. Or the blowers. HDR, okay. I'll put the HDR on at least, that should help a little bit. Yes, sex play. Thank you for noticing that I stopped in midair and disconnected me from the network. Oh.
There. Right, let's just fingers crossed that I don't kill my VRAM now. Uh, no, no, no Vulcan at all. It seems to be smooth enough. I noticed a slight dip in performance, but uh, you know what? If I can, if my PC can run at a suitable frame rate without Vulcan, I will continue without it until it is definitely fixed. I have turned down a lot of the graphics settings, so that's why my frame rate is back to where it should be. I'll try them with Vulcan later. I'm not going to mess with it for too long, too much longer now. Because if I keep messing with it, I'm not actually going to go anywhere. Hopefully, the feed isn't too jittery. Seems to be performing suitable enough. Carbs are fine, oils and cylinders are fine. Kettle flaps are trailing. Said air temperature is right here. Uh, minus 10, we're fine. We're not picking up any icing anyway. I'm gonna make a slight course change and get back on the route. Still at 6,000 feet. And we shall cross our fingers and toes and hope the game doesn't crash again. If it does crash again, I will cancel this stream for today while I spend the day troubleshooting. And then I will resume this and restart it another time. We will just memory hole this entire flight like it never happened. Six thousand feet. Sit a little closer to the pedals. There we go. Oh, there we go. Now I can sit comfortably. Once we get up to 8,000 feet, I'll set the up pilot and get myself nice and wings level. Excuse me.
Ah, we're going into a, nut, into a headwind, that's why we're going so slow. That makes more sense. Good as at least it shouldn't affect my course adjustment too heavily. Basically just about on the route, which is fine. And we're now established out of Goose Bay, so we will switch ourselves over to Obish. Established level, it's 8,000 feet. All pilot procedures. Alright, let's set the Yeah, there we go, that's props set. And full pressure where I need it to be. Officer Wolf, hello! How are you doing? Hmm? Around the world again, yes. So far, I've made it from Aberdeen in Scotland through a series of legs. This is the leg from Goose Bay to Wabush, and I'm also going to start calling it the Curse Leg because every time I've tried to fly out of Goose Bay, the game has crashed. I've disabled Vulcan, I've turned down my graphical settings because it's complaining with VRAM. Let's see what happened. I'm flying the DC-3, and I would like to think I've made a wise choice. Also flying inside the VATSIM network, so all flights are online and tracked. And if there's any controllers present, they they will work me just the same as any other aircraft. I 
how are you getting on with the Zebo mod, Wolf? I've um I've been thinking about it, but uh, I have to say I prefer my less modern aircraft. Uh, if I was going to do a tube liner, I have the Michael Wilson's B707. It's now no longer in the store. Uh, that's a bit old. And I would like the Fly J Sims into 7200 if I'm going to fly really old school with something a bit more modern, because that has the plug-in for Exiva, which I also have. Thanks to the Michael Jet, well, Wilson aircraft. So those would be my choices. That being said, yeah, I'm, I'm not that fussed about you know, flying on a virtual airline. Um, I spend most of my time just flying in fast sim. Uh, to be honest, I've yet to be in a region of space where I've been on at a time where it's been consistently controlled. I've managed to piss off oceanic control by crossing from Greenland to Canada. And that's been about the highlight of my time. It's fun, Officer Wolf, because uh, Oceanic Control wanted to talk to me on the on the radio, you know, so I could give them position reports, which I've never really done in a DC-3, of course, before. However, this DC-3 is equipped with oxygen, so I was flying at 24,000 feet. So like, okay, give me your speed. Um, I'm flying at 150 miles per hour indicated, not not. So I had to convert those for them. Then I was like, okay, no, no, I don't want you. I don't want knots. I want airspeed, like Mach number. It's like Mach number in a DC three, Mach point two two. <laughs> I he didn't talk to me after that. I wonder why. So yeah, it, it gave. I'm sure it gave the airliners a giggle traveling at Mach point seven nine. Uh, don't worry about it, Officer Wolf. I don't know what I'm talking about either. I've got no official real-world experience, really, on the radio. I just fake it as I make it. I mean, most of the controllers probably do as well. I imagine they're probably just as scared of fucking things up as you would be. Yes, you did not. You did not mishear that. 150 miles per hour indicated at 24,000 feet in a DC-3. Yeah, top kick, right? <laughs> Using the big brain stress here. <laughs> so that was fun. I'm sure, that, like I said, I'm sure the uh, the tube liners sailing along at 34,000 feet in Mach 79 got a good giggle at that. I'm sure. I was also flying southbound, so from Greenland down to Goose Bay, so I wasn't on any of the oceanic routes as such. So it was fine. There was nothing wrong with me flying it. And the VATSIM controller wasn't like going nuts at me for flying in that airspace. He just wanted, I just expected to check in with them and get some flight following heat up. Chicago to Japan and VATSIM would be a fun one. <laughs> That'll be fun. Right. I am going to keep the heading and altitude hold on a little longer. I am going to step away and get something to nibble on and try not to sail through 10,000 feet myself. I'll be back in a little while. See you shortly.
Okay, lunch got and nobbled. I'm gonna proceed direct to the VR now that I've got like this and I've got I'm able to pick it up. And we have 140 miles to go in our trip. So the next thing for me to do is to catch the localizer, which I will set to nav one. Oop. Obviously, I'm not catching the needles for that. Now I can do a visual landing over the over the over the water, um, and that is a perfectly legit um, landing given the conditions today. Or I can do another I, uh, an I, an I, another. Um, ILS over the over the mountains into it's a straight in ILS approach straight into runway 36 or I can approach I can do a landing on runway 18 visual so we'll see how that goes I'll uh, wait and see what the weather conditions look like but uh, other than that we should be more or less good and uh, as we can see here, I'm getting a lot more stability out of the non-Vulcan version of 11.5 Beta. So we will see uh, how things go. And uh, I will do some testing today outside of uh, the stream to try and see what happens with that. And I've got the ILS approach set up just in anticipation of any bad conditions that show up. Although, having looked at the METAR, I am not expecting anything uh, coming soon. I'm slightly north of my course. That's totally fine though, because A, we're the only people in the area, and B, the uh, the situation is pretty much fine. Uh, jobs, the what, I'm using real world weather downloaded from x -Plane, so if x -Plane catches the weather and does the METAR for me, then we should be, oh, wrong button, we should be pretty much fine. Uh, I don't want the radio, what do I want? The, I don't want the map, where is the weather? This sim, ah there it is. So we've got the winds aloft here, five minutes ago they refreshed, but uh, there we are, 170 at two knots at this altitude. So actually, I'm perfect for a visual approach runway 18, so that's what we'll be doing. Of course a two knot tailwind would really cause us a problem. I do have the ILS charts for uh, a non uh, an ILS approach if necessary, but other than that they just tell us to fly the... They just tell us that the approach is a, a visual approach. Uh, they've, they've got an, an ILS runway 36, they've also got a radio, like a, a GPS guided nav for 18 and 36, but for visual approaches, it's visual runway is 18 and, one, and 36. <clears throat> and uh, it's uh, ILS only for runway 36, so they, they don't have an ILS going out over the, over the lake, I'm guessing. And that's fine by me. Uh, being honest with you, I mean, the taxiway would be shorter if I took a runway 36 approach, because I could probably just vacate of via Bravo at the end of the runway and turn in. However, if I get the, if I get, this is very good at doing short distance landings. I, if I totally butter the landing and do a really good job, I could be stopped by the time I get to the Bravo taxiway. Although I don't think that's going to happen. Hey, Pilot Beagle! Welcome back to the chat, guys. Pilot Beagle is new to the world of flight simming and uh, is most welcome to my channel. I'm looking forward to the next battery of questions. 150 for four knots? Yeah, we'll take a we'll take a visual 18, I think. Yeah, Pilot, I knew you could do it. Um, the FMCs are always scary to look at when you play with them, but once you figure out kind of a general navigation around them, 
Um, they're not that hard. I mean, pilots are lazy, right? So making something easy to use is the only way to make it actually get used, right? Yeah, I do that a lot, Pygo. Uh, yes, I have a new livery. I have 72 liveries, actually, from X-Plane for the DC-3, thanks to some very clever people. There are also ones you can pay for that look nicer, but uh, these are the freeware ones. And uh, today I'm rocking the Pan American because I'm going over Canada, right? I thought about Canadian livery, but I haven't found any designs that I actually quite like the look of. And um, previewing them in x is a bit of a pain in the ass right now, it tends to crash the game when you try to preview 72, uh, prepare a 72 library livery set. Probably should have done them in stages. <laughs> So here's the game plan. I'm going to descend back to my assigned altitude of 8,000 feet, since I'm just under 12,000. Thanks to my inability to correctly set the, the autopilot in this aircraft. A good friend, Domestus, is sitting in United Nations, uh, United Nations 0793. Uh, United Nations 793 rather. Uh, he's up ahead. He started behind me. My game crashed three times and he's got quite a good quite a good lead on me now, but that's fine. And the weather forecast for this area is clear. So, I, it's too nice not to do a visual approach, to be honest. I've, uh, having looked at the charts, I'm going over a lake into the uh, on the approach, so although I could do an ILS approach, uh, the winds are 150 for 4 knots according to Domestis, who's got the METAR up for that area. I see no reason whatsoever to do an ILS approach from runway 36, fighting a small crosswind when I could do a very small, I could do a visual landing and fight only a very small crosswind. So we will uh, we will not be following the ILS today. To be fair, the charts that I have obtained say that if there's blasting, there's an area of there's a quarry uh, for, that where blasting occurs just to the southwest of the airfield. When the blasting has occurred, the ILS is the ILS procedure is not to be followed. So we can say that that's happening on such a beautiful day in the middle of nowhere. Let's see, how far are we from Goose now? We're, we're, not, we're not tracking Goose anymore, actually. Goose was 117.3, so let's quickly 
can shift that over to on, 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 on DME B. No, we're not getting a signal for it at all anymore. Interesting. Oh no, it's 110.3, that's right. So that's just over halfway. So we will switch that over there and... There we go. The, uh, the see I'm picking up the, the DME for 110.3 which is goose but I'm not able to actually catch bearing information anymore so you know then that uh, we're getting pretty far away and we're about to lose signal probably that's fine yep there he goes there's the signal gone just on cue that's what I don't know if that's realistic or not but it's a nice touch We are going to make a slight course hop, keeping the rate of descent quite quite slim. Going too hardcore with it. Yes, we should remove the flying surfaces when we go too fast because that would be realistic. We do have blackout set up, and yep, that's fine. We're going to make a slight right turn now and get ourselves back because we should be fairly close to our path now. Yes, we've re. As you can, you can see, the moment I. <laughs> you saw there on the map the moment I departed fairly quickly from my flight plan. You can see when I went for my lunch and came back, suddenly changed it, got myself back on schedule again. Once we re-enter the radio, there's, a, there's bird activity even before it. It's actually pretty close, so we're going to have to keep an eye out for bird strikes, potentially. And yes, bird strikes are modelled in the X-Plane, although I've never sustained one yet, so I don't know how well. All I know is I probably would not be a fan of them. Coming up on... Coming up to 9,000 feet soon, and uh, our assigned altitude today was 8,000 feet that I'd booked myself for. So let's uh, let's try and get closer to that if I can. I have to say, finding charts for Canada was actually a real pain in the ass. Free ones, anyway. Um, I had to subscribe to uh, a free service called flightsplan.com, FLTplan.com, which I believe is a real world one as well, and it provides PDFs for download uh, for free. Um, it, they don't look to be Jeppesen charts, they look like they're published Canadian ones, and they're not as detailed, they don't give me the full plans. Uh, that being said, uh, they give me enough to get me down safely on the ground, so we'll work with them. Uh, if anyone can give me a link to some Jeppesen charts that are free, I'd like that. But uh, at the same time, I don't want anyone to break any rules or laws, so don't give me stuff for free unless it's supposed to be for free. If it's supposed to be for free, tell me where you got it from instead. I am just keeping an eye, an eye on the speed there because we're getting very close to 200 miles per hour, which is very, which, and as you can see, the red line there, just above 200, is our VNE. VNE. <laughs> this thing uh, does accelerate in a dive quite handily. In fact, we're going to come out that dive just a little. 
that's a little bit too much, so we'll click that one down again. Now, actually having in, in a conversation with the developer on the forums, and uh, some errata from the previous leg that I flew, um, I should not have been flying at 24,000 feet. Uh, just because you're carrying oxygen does not mean that you would be wearing a pressurised suit. And the sudden changes in altitude would potentially have caused decompression sickness. I would have got the bends at 24,000 feet, which would have been quite painful. Uh, he did post a reply which I haven't read. Might as well do that now, actually. Yes, I'll just check my messages on the chat, because only the most professional of streams here. And he was meant to be giving me some advice on... I basically asked him, okay, well, what would be the right operating altitude then? If you're going to tell me that that's wrong, tell me what's right, you know? So let me just get signed into the explain forums and see where my, what, what the notification came through as. There's the notifications. Do you not hear the Norse code for the Navids? I will have to check that. Let me just double check the volume.
Well, I posted the request in the chat there in the, in the, on the Explain Forums post. Uh, he came back to me and uh, I made a few suggestions about asking about uh, a speedo and compass, and uh, he was like, "Hey, don't worry about it." Uh, he gave me some quick tips on how to do some quick speed up conversions. I'm fine with that. Uh, apparently, the oxygen is regulated, so it flows the right amount based on altitude, which is a really nice touch, actually. Nice bit of care of attention to detail, because I hadn't considered that when I was flying at 24,000 feet, my oxygen should actually de lower, uh, drop at a lower rate. Like I should be consuming more oxygen at that speed. And we've busted through 8,000 because I was not paying attention. So we'll just <laughs> we'll just get a gentle climb going now. Lead some of that airspeed. Uh, he recommended 10,000 to 8,000 for day and night no oxygen flight. Uh, I apparently I should also have been using 100% oxygen at 24,000 feet, uh, even though because although I epoxy is modelled. And explain they don't have that level of degree of accuracy. So I should have been using up a lot more of my oxygen at a much higher rate back then. So I'll have to factor that in if I ever do some more high altitude ops. Checking my position, I'm slightly off, of the, off on the other side of the route map, but there's nothing on the other side of the route map where there is an whereas there is an air, airfield on the north side. So I'd rather be too too far south on the route than too far north. No, Jules, they're not dead. They're just resting. You're all virtual. I'm a virtual pilot. Where they're all virtual passengers. You can stow that immersion for a, for a, for a more professional streamer. <laughs> immersion ruined, unsubbed. I get it. Which lake? There's so many of them. <laughs> all the lakes, forever. It's fine. There's a parachute at the back there, Jules. Every lake. Absolutely. <clears throat> Chat, any professional pilots might know that might know the answer to this. Or just professional simmers. At what point in time am I supposed to take the landing lights off? As I understand it, you're supposed to keep them on below the transition altitude. Um or do you only use them during takeoff and landing? Because I, I'm happy to have them on, uh, but I don't want to unless I don't need them, you know what I mean? I should probably turn off the booster pumps actually. Let's not run them into the ground, yeah? Landing lights, Domestus. The two big ones on the wings. The left and right ones. Off above ten thousand k on below. That's that's kind of what I thought. Uh, 
I knew there was an altitude at which they definitely had to be on on a different an altitude. I thought it was the transition altitude, but 10,000 feet works for me too. So we'll just keep them on the whole way. Right, so I've just made a quick correction to the camera for my um, dome there, and from the flight engineer's position, it's a pretty cool position, as I was saying there when, when I realised my microphone was muted. It would be pretty nifty to have that for the landing approach, but uh, I don't think that's possible. I might have to try and see if it can be done from the, from the replay perspective. But... Um, it's actually really good for checking the gate things that like they're reading off the gauges and stuff. There you go. Well, that would probably explain why my trim's been a bit wacky. I did never, and I've never set the first officer's hidden uh, altimeter. It was originally three thousand and one. Let's 
just verify altimeter here. Now it's now 3025 or up here, so let's take the latest setting there. That being the case, we shall let the descent continue a little longer until we get to 8,000 feet. And during this time, we will review our charts. I'll just quickly double check to make sure I've actually got other charts for, and I don't need an instrument approach. Don't really want the aero, I've got, I don't really need anything here because it's given me RNAV procedures for runway 18, like GNSS, but I don't need those. Yep, we're fine. Yeah, this is on 128.12, Met R is in the same location. We'll, um, let's see if that actually works. That'd be interesting to see, wouldn't it? One twenty eight one two is on this. Let's see what we've actually thought to use the the Metar in built into into X plane. I heard it was a bit. Uh, let's evaluate that then. Two. Ah, that's why, Domestus, you need to turn on the DME beacon, not the VOR beacons. Well, that explains a lot. ball of turbulence. I'm guessing we had a weather update there. Twenty-eight point one two. What do I have I set that wrong? No, it's on. Well, I'm going to look like a Burke now. He's going to be like, you should really pay attention to these things. <sighs> it's a VOR DME, but you need to listen to the DME, not the VOR, apparently. Because, whoops. Oh, well, the more you know. That poor guy, that poor developer at Fiska Labs is probably rolling, he's rolling, and he's rolling around in his office, wondering why are such a dumbass was was allowed to buy this fucking plane. Oh my god, this guy doesn't even know how to use DME, but he's asking me about cruising altitudes at twenty four thousand feet. What an idiot! Ah, the ADF didn't work last time. I would wonder if it would be the same thing, use the DME switch. Some sort of, eh, I don't know. Some sort of uh, shenanigans, I guess. Let's see where the nearest NDB actually is.
So Wabish Atis is apparently 122.0 on this map. Interesting. Nope, still not working. Obviously it's uh, not happening. That's the Metar is, it, is on 122.0. Still not working, so that's fine. We're not fussed. It's not a drama. Okay. 50 miles out and 8,000 feet, 8, 16, 24, so we should start our descent at 24 miles out using the general rule of three, t <laughs> three times your descent speed. That's probably not anything like realistic, but that's fine, we will do that anyway. I am loving these uh, rural community areas, like this is some beautiful scenery to be living in. Probably would look prettier if I had the right tile sets installed, but uh, you and I both know that that is just not not an option right now because instability inherent. Although I may well try the uh, scenery improvements with Vulcan disabled because that could well be a thing. I have them installed somewhere in my computer, just sitting archived, so we'll give that a shot. Slightly left of center. I've got quite a while to go yet. Shanwick radio is on. Good thing I'm not not going over the ocean right now. Digital charts. I don't want terminal procedures. Uh, sectionals would be nice, but I actually want. Where is.
hardly any cloud, cloud actually in the area, which is really cool. Okay, kind of on 10 miles to be to before we hit our descent speed. Course correction here for this. It is a nice part of the world to see. Uh, Jobs, I'm in thoroughly enjoying the scenery so far. Even if it is just stock default uh, Canada, like it still already looks pretty nice. Okay, I have a fair to middling good idea of where I am on the maps. And if that's correct, which I'm going to assume it is. Hedge, there should be a small lake circular. Uh, nope, I got that wrong. Brilliant. 
See, the problem is, is you look at the map and it's just lake after lake after lake. And X-Plane is not currently modelling them all exactly the same way, probably because it's really hard to figure out what's a lake and what's just swampland that's seasonal. So I'm not upset at them for that. So this is the Shuanipi Lake, seemingly. Ah, I see where I am now. I'm slightly north of that. Right, 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 okay. Right, okay, so... Must be coming in on about 24 out now. Yep, top of descent was a while ago. We'll start our descent. So, descent checklist. Oh, pilot is meant to be off. We're going to leave it going a little longer. Altimeter. Let's catch the latest Metar. I'll bring up the small turn while we're doing that. Three zero two four now. I wasn't that. They weren't half kidding when they said there was a slight pressure. Pressure change. There we go. Uh, mixture is now going to go auto rich for descent. I'll get the first officer's panel to do that. Okay, carburetor should be set to full cold. It is. Fuel boosters are now going gone back on. Twenty thousand RPM on the props. Yep. Approach is one hundred and twenty miles an hour for that. I'll go all pilot off when we go to approach. All right, we're going to bring in our begin our approach now, passing seven thousand feet. I'm going to accelerate. Rate of descent. And the glide slope on this is quite steep. It's a 48,000 feet localizer intercept. The visual approach doesn't have any such things. They define the safe altimeter as 4, 5,300, 5, so we're going to get down to that for, for our approach. Domestis is currently on final, so I do wish him the best of luck for that. That's Wabush Lake there. So if I'm right, other side of this hill, there he is. Because of the distances involved, I'm not actually seeing his aircraft. That's okay though, we'll see him much closer once we're on the deck. I think he's landed. Nice! I hope that was a safe landing for him. <laughs> So, I'm going to approach myself for a straight in. I'm going to slightly divert, of the, divert from the radial. Actually, no, because the DME gives me the approach. Domestis, did you ever so slightly cock that up? Tailwind of the 
That's what I want to hear. Okay, we're going to bring the thralls back down so we can slow it down. Might have scratched the wing a bit. <laughs> if it's still attached, it's okay. It'll buff out. For seven miles to the DME. When we get to the DME, it'll be a left turn for in, for for a, vis, for a visual landing. The VLR is somewhere a bit here, I believe. There's his aircraft there. Nice to see that it's actually working. Field in sight. Still want to bring the airspeed back further because I am hecking fast. So we're going to bring the manifold pressure all the way down to really stupidly low actually. get the Sperry set as desired. So ILS has it as 001, so I'm going to assume that the other end is 179. There's the speed coming down. 5,000 feet, uh, pa passing through the, sa the safe altitude, but uh, we're setting up for a straight in. So. We're going to continue that rate of descent. Now, because we don't have enough an official and formal um, information chart as to the missed approach, the missed approach will be as follows. I'll fly the runway heading. Uh, climb to 5,000 feet and then circle and re I'll, I'll circle and reapproach the uh, Wabish DME. Wabish traffic. Golf Delta Golf 688 for visual landing runway 18. Two miles east of the northeast of DME for approach. Alright, autopilot's getting disengaged. Let's get the trim adjusted. Throttles back. You're not hearing me on that sim? Of course not. Probably disconnected, no my luck. 122.8. Comes check. Right, so just double check your uh, batteries are turned, your batteries for your aircraft are turned on, the, radi the uh, radios are connected to the batteries. That was far too steep, and I've most certainly buggered this landing approach up. Wabbish traffic, golf to the golf 688, not aligned on approach and going around. Yeah, I'm carrying way too much speed here. Actually, aircraft speed is coming down quite rapidly. Are we going to stick this? Against my better judgment, we're going to get. We're going to give it a shot. Lobbish traffic. Golf to golf. Six eight eight. Cancel miss approach. In on final. Short final. Half a mile in. Landing approach is a little steep.
tail wheel is locked. Slight crosswind. And rudder. This thing's going to float a bit. That's the end of the runway. And the short takeoff landing capabilities of the DC-3 are shown again. <laughs> oh, I'd get my ass kicked for that in real life, I'm sure. Unlocking the tail wheel. There we go. Demesis, I will be looking forward to seeing you the replay of yours when it happens. You were looking a bit sketchy on mine, but I figured that was just down to that sim logic. I like how they put a cross through this to say this is not a runway. Like, that's a bit optimistic, dudes. Alright, we're gonna head for we're gonna head for the first terminal rather than the second terminal. Golf 688 Wabish traffic vacated right via Charlie. Taxing to stand one via Bravo. Lavish traffic, Golf to Golf 6 today, radio check. Still not being heard, interesting. Easy, Lily. Oh, you disconnected. I would explain it. <laughs> For long taxis, we'll just put the tail wheel lock on. Yeah, 
Alright. Clock. Close up procedures for the rollout. Taxi. Flaps are up. Checked. Cowl flaps open. Checked. Booster pumps off. Ignition is off. Yes, radio's. No, we're not doing that yet. Trim is neutral. Props are fully forward. Tailwheel is as needed. Transponder is to stand by now. I don't think we'll be needing it for this part of the journey. Quick brake check. There we go. I am tempted to get my steering wheel bound to be the tiller, which would be hilarious for aircraft that require one. Unfortunately, the nose wheel tiller is not is, is actually used by this particular developer to control um, to control the skis that go on the brake on this, and if they're half open or half closed, that causes problems. So uh, we leave that for now. I'm not planning on using the the, water, the, uh, the snow skis anytime soon. Well, that's a good shout. Shall unlock the tailwheel. Pop in a little right rudder, a right right throttle, and a little left brake. There we go. go to the terminal. Actually, we'll take this parking stand right here. Let's go to the parking one. All right, parking brake is on. Throttles back. Auto lean for the mixture, followed by 
throttle cut. And tail lights, passing lights out. Clean up the magnetos. Generator right and generator left off. They're already disconnected already. Strobe lights off. Both radios tuned to 122.8 just for the next part of the journey. I'm anticipating you. My landing replay is queued up. All, I need to disconnect the, from the network first to see it so that things don't go horribly, horribly wrong. And aircraft's cold dark. Doorways are going to be open. All right, everyone, off your ass. You're walking the rest of the way. Uh, let's see. Disconnecting for the network. There we go. And cleared. Let's pick up Domestice's Ripta. There we go. Now let's have a look at this on the other chat. Let's have a look at this then. And over. Oh, it's a bit wobbly. Bump. Oh, you didn't catch the wings. No, you didn't scratch the wings at all. You're all right. <laughs> Immediately taxi clear the runway. <laughs> nice vacating. <laughs> Bro, I love it. <sighs> I had so many landings like that when I was getting started with this thing. Let's see. And where is actually before we do that? <laughs> Cut to commercial. Uh, there we go.
go. Have a good one, Domestus. Enjoy your meal when you get to it. Oh, I'm still on voice. Yeah, <laughs> see you, mate. See you, mate. And... Only the scariest of approaches here. Actually. <sighs> there you go, folks. Another semi successful landing. Sorry about the crack, the game's crashing a little earlier. That was a bit annoying for me, but uh, I've turned off Vulcan and I'm told that that will maybe not improve the frame rate, but it will improve the stability at least until uh, later updates are fixed. So we'll just see how it goes. Um, I will try. So I'll be taking further recommendations. Uh, I do want to be making my way south, so now that we've uh, we're about to leave Newfoundland and or Labrador, we're going to stop for a few cold beers at Labrador City, and uh, then I'm going to plot my route south, probably out of Canada into into the into America. Uh, we shall have to see what the routes look like. I'm willing to take suggestions. Uh, go ahead and join the Discord somewhere about here and um, yeah somewhere about this way and we shall see how that looks um, I do want to generally make my way to JFK Airport just because I think it'll be hilarious to watch VATSIM controllers have conniptions about an airliner that's got two propellers instead of four jet engines uh, try to land at JFK uh, that'll be busy Hopefully, if I pick the right time of day, and uh, it should give you guys some proper bats and traffic, me some proper traffic experience for sure. And uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, once we've figured our way out to JFK, I'll start making my way to the west. We'll uh, try to head over the Rockies. That'll be a fun. That'll be a fun little pass, and it should be pretty scenic. And then uh, we'll maybe try San Francisco on the west coast. See if the ATCs have some chill there. And then we'll start working our way north back up to Vancouver, Alaska, all that sort of stuff. That's the general game plan through America. Once we leave Alaska, it'll we'll have to be Russia uh, into Russia and then down south into China and Hong Kong. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, yeah, that's about as far forward as I've thought generally. But uh, that's the general idea. So it's maybe not around the world, it's more like around the northern hemisphere. But we, I, in the long run, I also have a pull-to-pull -pull planned after this round-the-world trip, so we'll have a look at uh, Africa and South America then. Uh, so, we'll see how it goes. Until then, uh, 
say hi on the Discord, leave some comments in this when it finally goes live on YouTube, so just watch for that, and uh, we'll hopefully see what you all think. Thank you very much, and we'll see you sometime after now.